The hearings on the case of an opposition leader Yermek Narimbaev is being slowed down on purpose, say his spouse and fellow men. Yermek Narimbaev has been in detention for over a month now. He is charged with illegal actions such as participation in the May marches, sitting rail organization and hunger striking with demand of President Nazarbayev's resignation. First he got 15 days, which eventually turned into more severe conviction. The hearings have been cancelled under various reasons before. Today, the police officers failed to fulfill certain procedures for transporting Narimbayev from the isolation ward to the courtroom. According to the suspect's spouse, the authorities may have feared the publicity as more than 30 media representatives came to the court. Narimbayev's case has created public resonance in the society. Now he is charged for violence toward law enforcement body representatives and insulting the judge. Yet there are no witnesses of these crimes. The hearing is postponed until June 21st. The court is dismissed. Labor unions and other public activists in Almaty are going to hold a rally to protect Natalia Tamilova, leader of the Karaganda Miners Association called Miners Family. Public associations of Almaty are protecting the interests of Karaganda miners and not well-known association called Miners Family. Activists are protesting against the authorities pressuring the provincial organization and plan to rally on June 26. In case if the authorities ignore their demands, they claim to hold national rallies on the president's birthday. We'll hold a mass protest on July 6 if our demands will not be fulfilled. Natalia Tamilova, a leader of Miners family organization, lives and works in a small town of Shakhtinsk nearby Karaganda city. She got in real trouble after she organized a meeting of miners recently. That law was supposed to protect you. On the day she held a meeting, she was cut from telephone and water supply and then visited by sanitary inspectorate. Eventually, landlord refused to rent the office. Now I'm looking for a new office to rent knowing it will be impossible because the authorities warned everybody not to rent the space for me. Tamilova is sure that pressuring is made by a local government office. She claims that they threatened her with fabricated case on tax violations. We have nothing to do with it. Of course, I was there during the meeting because it is part of my responsibilities to visit and know what is going on in town, but I have nothing to do with landlords. Public activists in Almaty are sure that miners' community will protect Natalia Tamilova. However, miners keep passive position on this issue right now. It's known that the miners' family has helped dozens of miners in the past. Well, what we miners, well, what we miners can do about it, you know that everything is dictated by our employers. At this time, Natalia is concerned about her safety and afraid she will have to leave the town. She thinks it will be difficult to prove the pressure by the authorities. The lie in Nuratan style. The ruling party members have stepped back from their promises to consider the demands of the Housing for People movement activists. Instead of dialogue, the protesters stood for a while in front of the party's closed office. The rally in front of the office of Nuratan party on Wednesday morning was a quite miserable scene. As soon as police arrived, the activists of the Housing for People movement became quiet and shortly after wrapped up their meeting. Just a week ago, the ruling party members promised the movement representatives that their issue will be considered within a week term. Today, however, they didn't wish to talk to rally organizers. That's all, thanks. No, I didn't promise anything. I'm saying I didn't promise. During previous meeting, the activists warned that if their demand will not be fulfilled, then they will join the opposition party Alga. Today, however, they demand sound differently without mentioning the opposition. We'll keep rallying every single day until somebody who is competent will not address our problems. By the end of the meeting, activists have corrected their rally plans. Now they will hold it not every day, but every Wednesday. They will establish contact with their Russian counterparts, who are going to hold national march of protest in all of Russia in September this year. Kazakh housing activists are thinking of the same campaign. Ignoring the deputies. In Pavladar, the regional prosecutor's office has violated some laws and procedures trying to construct its new building in a protected park zone. Lawyers claim it acted against law. The Pavlodar deputies are surprised by the regional prosecutor's office plan on constructing its new building right on the territory of the national park located on the shores of Irtush River. Deputy of the local parliament Anatoly Vinertsev can't recall him voting for such decision. 
There are certain regulations regarding the landlord distribution and they need to be observed. Lawyer Yuri Pavlenko explains that four years ago the deputies made a resolution according to which the mentioned area became protected park zone. Constructions are allowed only upon the permission of the city council. It may be allocated by a special decree adopted by majority votes of the deputies for that they have to pull out the land from the park zone upon special request made by, let's say, the prosecutor's office and then allocated for construction. But these procedures weren't observed. At the same time, prosecutor's office claims it functions strictly in line with laws and explains the necessity for constructing new building, saying they don't have enough room for staff and some of their departments and divisions are based on rented venues. It is not a masterpiece, but the building which is going to be constructed will be one of the most beautiful buildings, say a highlight of the city. Later it appeared that the prosecutor's office has also violated ecology law. It was supposed to hold a public hearing on the issue and get approval not only from the council members, but public as well. Kazakh NGO communities go into fine against corruption along with every member of the civil society. They just created an anti-corruption council and as a next step they intend to sign a memorandum on cooperation with the government. The letter has not yet reacted to NGO's call for collaboration. Kazakhstan has just established independent anti-corruption council, which under the support of Finnish government and Eurasia Foundation will enable civil society members track the country's performance in the annual corruption perception index rate. Kazakhstan is currently on the same 120th position with countries such as Mongolia, Vietnam and Ethiopia. I think that we have to form up certain public opinion, like we are poor because we live in corruption, then find concrete solutions of the problem. In a thematic workshop held in March, Bahit Tumenova started the Georgia's experience, where the government severely fought against corruption, firing 40,000 police officers. However, say Tumenova, the case is not applicable for Kazakhstan. The authority is our reflection. Don't promise much if you don't really mean it. When you think differently, say one thing to public and do another. Well, this has a medical explanation, confusional insanity. The created council is supposed to involve entire civil society sector, however, not everybody seems to be enthusiastic. Well, corruption requires more tough measures to eliminate it. I guess it's possible to fight it, although it may take quite long. Well, I follow the press and I can say it's not working. While the new council will be studying the problem, the government has already received letter inviting for cooperation. The reaction of the government, say many specialists, will be the indicator of its readiness to cooperate with civil society on the matter. So far it keeps quiet. These were all the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Thank you for watching us and goodbye.